Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Alvin. Like most days, I got off the school bus and walked two blocks to the kindergarten where my mom works. As usual, I stood waiting for her at the front of the building. On that day though, a man came from nowhere, grabbed my backpack, and ran away with it. Hey! That's my math homework you're stealing! I yelled after him. There's nothing of value to even steal! The man disappeared around the corner. Distraught, I slumped down and continued waiting for my mother. That's the price you pay for living here. Things like this happen all of the time. My mom finally got off work at 5 p.m. Someone stole my math homework while I was waiting for you, I told her. Just like me, she'd gotten used to it. You're lucky. Someone stole all four tires from a client's car today, she said laughing. <laughs> we continued chatting while walking to our fake home. You heard that right. I said fake. You'll figure out what I mean in a moment. You see, this old and rather dilapidated house goes with the rest of the neighborhood. After about 10 minutes, we made it to our fake home. My mom made herself a coffee as we waited for my dad until 6 p.m. After my dad came home from work, we spent another hour waiting impatiently. Then, we hurried around the house, closing the curtains so our neighbors wouldn't see us. From the moment the curtains closed every evening, we'd live as we truly are, like rich people. We went down to the basement of our fake home. My dad turned on the facial recognition system. We turned our faces to the hidden cameras. As soon as the system identified us, the secret door in our basement opened. The secret door revealed a 5.4 mile long tunnel. It's actually a subway line that belongs to my parents and me. We use this unique subway every night to reach our real home. After a short ride, we made it to our mansion. Our property is enclosed by 13 feet high walls. During the day, there are hundreds of people working here, maintaining the grounds. Maids, drivers, cooks, and gardeners. The staff leaves at 6.30 p.m. We arrive after they're gone, and it's only us at the mansion. We walked into the dining hall. We filled our plates with food from the buffet and sat down. The best chefs in the world cook a hundred different dishes every night. My dad asked, How was your day, son? Someone stole my backpack as I was waiting for mom. I had my math homework in that backpack. I need to do it all over again, I replied. Dad smiled. Bummer. I'm free tonight if you need help, he said. Dad, I hate hiding the fact that we're rich. Horrible things keep happening to us in that neighborhood, and they always will. Alvin, we talked about this so many times. We have to live this way. We have no choice but to adapt, he replied, frowning. Yes, we had talked about this many times. Yet I still didn't understand why we had to hide that we were the wealthiest family in the world. My grandfather had won the biggest jackpot of all time from the lottery. On the way to claim his winnings, he and my grandmother got in a car accident. My grandmother died instantly. My grandfather fell ill in his grief. So, he hired a lawyer to get his affairs in order and found an investment advisor. I'm not going to touch this money. Invest with it as you like. I want my son to benefit from it in the future he said. The advisor was very good at his job. He built hotels and shopping malls worldwide and bought shares in gold and diamonds and stakes in many successful companies. My grandfather's lottery winnings grew exponentially, reaching billions of dollars. When my grandfather died, my parents inherited all his wealth. For some reason, we have to hide it. We pretend to live in the lowest income neighborhood of our city. We can only enjoy the privileges of being wealthy when we're in the mansion. I've been putting up with this for years because my parents want me to, but I've had it. I want to live my best life 24 hours a day. It's my birthright. I thought about everything that night and came up with an idea. If I made sure my friends at school knew about how rich we were, they would definitely tell their friends and families. Word would spread like wildfire and all kinds of people would know about our fortune. Then my parents would have to concede that it was impossible to hide any longer and we could start living the high life every day. I put my plan into motion the next day without hesitation. To start, I decided to tell two people, Nancy and Justin. I can't really say that I like them. I think they're super obnoxious, but they both were pretty popular in school and loved gossiping. Thanks to them, my family's secret would be out in no time. After lunch, I called both of them to the schoolyard and cut to the chase. I'm going to share my family's biggest secret with you. They were both stunned. I'm not kidding what I'm about to tell you, so you've got to trust me, I said. 
I had to muster up the courage to keep speaking. Nancy and Justin waited with anticipation. They both stared at me intensely. My family is the richest family in the world. And I'm the richest kid in the world, I said. My friends just stared at each other. Then they both burst out laughing. If I'm honest, that's the reaction I was expecting. You don't believe me, and you have every reason not to. I'm going to ask you to come with me. What I'm about to show you is sure to convince you, I said. You better find other people to mess around with, Justin groaned. Nancy was all in. Alvin looks dead serious, she said, and I'm curious about what's happening here. I couldn't take my friends to our fake home because I didn't know how to operate the facial recognition system. That being the case, I wouldn't be able to open the secret door. That's why I decided to take them to the mansion in broad daylight. It would be my first time entering my own house from the front door. But first, I had to convince the security detail posted outside. There was a gigantic iron door at the entrance and a security booth for the guards. Nancy and Justin stared in disbelief, first at the majestic door, then at the towering walls. One of the guards came out of the booth. Kids, this is private property. Please leave, he said. I told the guard, you don't know me, but I live here. I want to show our house to my friends, I said. I'm not in the mood for jokes, kid. Move along, please, he groaned. My room is on the third floor, I said, trying to convince him. There's a MacBook on my bed right now. I binge-watched Netflix until late last night. I can list off every show to prove it to you. Take us up there. Son, you're a fool if you think you can play me like that. I'll have to make a citizen's arrest for trespassing if you don't leave now, he responded. Justin turned to me. Alvin, I don't know if this is your idea of a prank, but I'm not getting in trouble because of some weird lie. This guy seems pretty serious. Let's get out of here before he puts us in a chokehold or something, he said. I decided to play my last card. I'm going to tell my father about this. If you don't want to lose your job, let us in. This is my house, I screamed. At the last second, the iron gate started opening. A luxury car with dark windows was leaving the property. It stopped where we stood. The black backseat window came down. The person inside looked out and asked, What seems to be the problem here? The security guard said, Sir, this kid says he lives here. The man looked at me condescendingly. You certainly do not live here. This is my private property, and I have two daughters, no son, he said. Let's go, he commanded the driver, rolling up his window. I just stood there, shocked. He's lying. This is our house, I murmured. Justin and Nancy looked at each other nervously. Nancy said, and to think I believed you, even for a second. Justin nodded. Called it. They turned around and started walking back. I was sure that everyone at school would find out about what happened. This mansion was my home. Who was that man? Knowing it was useless to insist, I went back to my family's run-down fake house. When I walked into the house, I saw my parents waiting impatiently for me. They both looked upset. Obviously, they knew what had happened. My mom said, Alvin, we watched you and your friends on the security camera. What you did was incredibly reckless. I had tears <laughs> pouring down my face. You're right, mom. I'm so sorry. But who was that man? Don't we own the mansion? I asked. My dad said, Of course we do. That man is a professional actor. Staff at the mansion think he owns the house. It's another precaution we had to take so that no one would suspect what's going on. Dad, why do we have to take so many precautions? Why are we hiding our real selves from the world? I really want to know, I pleaded. My dad looked at my mom, who nodded at him before turning to me. We hid some things from you to protect you. We knew we'd have to tell you one day, but we were worried about your mental health, Dad said, pausing. He looked back at my mom again. She nodded for him to go on. Then she started crying <laughs> softly. My dad took a deep breath and began to explain. We used to be the family you always wanted us to be. You weren't born yet. We had a daughter named Betty. Everyone knew how rich we were, which made our lives incredibly difficult. We used to go everywhere with an army of guards. We all had to wear bulletproof vests. Then something awful happened. Someone managed to kidnap your sister. They demanded we give them a hundred million dollars as ransom. We said yes, of course. But they never released her, even though we gave them the money. The police were sure it was because Betty had seen their faces. This was a massive trauma for us. After that, your mom and I made a decision. We moved to the inner city and set up this life to hide our wealth. We lost our daughter. We couldn't protect her. We don't want to lose our son too. Alvin, 
All this is for you. This is the only way to live a quiet life away from danger. Now I knew everything. I hugged my dad. My mom got up and joined us. We all cried for Betty for a while. I'm really sorry about today. I didn't know you were trying to protect me. I will be careful from now on, I said. From that day on, I made mom and dad a promise to live humbly during the day and never tell anyone again.